Sox up 5-2. Hey, three outs or three run lead. Yeah. Two, five outs from the game, right? Up three runs. Mind you of anybody else? How about Cubs? Eighth inning. Five outs, up three runs. Cubs end up losing. Hmm, it's foreshadowing. Derek Jeter scores on the Williams single Yankees trail 5-3. After a Hideki Matsui double, Jorge Posada steps up. Boy, that's just hitting it where they ain't. Williams scores. Matsui scores. Damon late getting the throw in. Posada at second, and we are tied at five. All righty, we go to the eighth now. One on, one out. Bernie, we're, uh, that's Alfonso Soriano. And he lines out to Todd Walker, who gets the force at second. So we're tied at five, and well, we're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Mariano Rivera now in the game. Todd Walker, little bloop to second. Soriano makes a play. Bottom nine we go. None on, two out. Bernie. Hot shot, and look at Walker. With total disregard for his team's dry cleaning bill, makes a play. We've got bonus baseball in the 10th after an Ortiz double. Two on, or one on, two out, and uh, that's not going to get it done. Millar pops out. Rivera getting it done for the Yanks. So we go to the 11th. Tim Wakefield on in relief, and the very first pitch to Aaron Boone. With his brother in the broadcast booth, Aaron Boone hitting a buck 25 in the postseason. The unlikeliest of heroes and the walk-off shot for the Yanks. The curse lives on. I, you you got to say it. And Tim Wakefield, the pitch so well, was 2-1 coming in, 2-9-1 ERA in the postseason. That's including the Boone homer. So you can't say he necessarily went with the wrong guy, but maybe he went to Wakefield too late. The Yankees in jubilation dancing around and Pedro can barely stand to watch. Gave it a good effort, but perhaps Grady Little stuck with him a little bit too long in that eighth inning. The Yanks do win it six to five. They are the sixth walk-off home run for New York in the postseason. This since Joe Torre took over in 96. It's also the fifth series clinching walk-off in postseason history. And the man who hit it couldn't wait to speak with our Peter Gammons when it was over. What went through your mind when the ball jumped off your bat? I got it. I got it. I stayed, got, got inside it enough, and, and I knew I got it, but uh, I tell you, if we would have lost today, uh, I, I would not have been, it would not have been a fun four months for me. I know I, you know, not, not performing very well, and uh, you know, there's always a silver lining sometimes, and sometimes things happen uh, in crazy ways, and what a job Mo did. I mean, what, this is, this is stupid, man. This is unbelievable. Is this the kind of game that, growing up in the game, that you always dreamed about? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone in this stadium at some point dreamed of this kind of thing. Um, and to get to live it out, uh, I can't even really feel my body still. This is, this is unbelievable. Aaron, thanks a lot. And back to you. Thank you, Peter. That's getting it done, and Joe Torre gets it done one more time. The Yankees back in the World Series. He's now live at the podium in the Bronx. I don't know what he did differently, but he certainly has, you know, he said, I think he said a couple. I know he's hit one home run, maybe a couple off him, and, and he's gotten some base hits, maybe a different approach. But Georgie is, uh, I mean, I, this, this kid has grown up uh, over the years that, we, that he's been here and I've been here. And this is by far his, uh, his best year uh, as far as, you know, catching, handling pitchers, going out there and telling Roger what to do and, and stuff like that. It, it's, uh, it's a credit to this, uh, this young man, how hard he's worked. Bob. Joe, congratulations. Thank you. You put J.M.B. and Lowe in the batting order, responded with two homers for you. You put Rivera in three innings for the first time in a long time, got the win. You put Boone in late in the game, Finch Rutter. Yeah, won the ball defense. Game for you. I put my defensive guy in there in a home run. <laughs> so the question is, how do you do it? Well, I didn't do it. They did it. I mean, I'm. Uh, I mean, the, I mean, the guy who stopped the bleeding, the guy who put a tourniquet on the whole thing, was Mike Messina. I mean, he first and third, nobody out, and he gets out of that jam, getting a double play ball from uh, Damon, which is not easy to do, and striking out Veritek, who's killed us. Uh, that was that was the turning point for me. It kept it there. You know, you felt like you were getting your brains beat out, and then you look it up the scoreboard, it was 4 nothing, and then Jason hits one, it's 4-1, and you say, okay, you know, now, you know, we're in arm's length here. 
Uh, it took a little wind out of our sails when Ortiz said hit a home run off Boomer, uh, but these these guys just come just kept going at it. <laughs> okay, over here. Joe, uh, Roger probably a little bit happy that his career didn't end on that way. If you could just uh, talk about that. Well, you know, I, I always look try to look at the at that half full glass, and I was saying, well, this is a perfect way for Roger to get 20 wins this year to to win this game. And then when I saw him come out, I said, well, the only way that's going to happen is if we continue, go on. He battled it. He didn't have good stuff. I mean, he uh, like he tried to muscle a little bit. Uh, emotionally, he was fine. I thought he was in you know pretty good control of himself. But but he got in some pitch count problems, especially to, to Trot Nixon. Got behind an account and then threw him a fastball. And Trot Nixon can hit a fastball on Christmas Day. I mean, he's he, he's killed us. There. That whole ball club. I mean, when you when you think how many games we've played and how evenly we're matched, um, I, I hate playing them. I mean, I didn't look forward to playing them. But now that it's over with, uh, it's I can't be more satisfied. Tom, um, actually, Joe, it was to the point about Clemens. You know, is it emotionally wrenching to have to go out and get him, and or was it clear that you had to go to Mussina at that point? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I, that later on his emotions. We're trying to win a ball game, you know, and, and you know the leash is very short when it comes to Game Seven, uh, or you know, postseason period. But and, and when you know everybody's in that bullpen and. And we had Heredia up, too, just in case Moose wasn't ready. But Moose got ready quickly, and uh, when he came out of the game, he puts his you know, three great innings, and, and then he came back in after he changed shirts and sat on the bench the rest of the game. He says, remind me that I want to be a starter. I said, don't worry, we'll talk about it. But it was, I mean, it was a team effort. This was a, a total team effort, guys running hard, playing hard. Uh, I didn't like the signs that were, uh, things were happening when Soriano hit that ball and hit the... Uh, hit the mound, you know, and then Walker, you know, makes two sensational plays, that one of them, and then one on Bernie. I said, oh, I don't like the way this thing is unraveling here. Uh, but uh, Booney, I mean, he, he struggled since he's been here offensively. Uh, what a what a huge, uh, huge base hit for him, home run for him. Okay, here. Joe, with, with all the baseball that you've seen in your lifetime, and if you could, for a second, step away from your own excitement, what could you say to Red Sox fans and how their team has found another way to break their hearts. Well, I don't, I don't think, I think we beat them. I don't think they beat themselves. I, and I know the Red Sox fans are going to be very proud of this ball club that they had this year. They were the toughest team in the eight years I've been managing this team. And, and, and Grady Little should be congratulated. I know he probably doesn't want to hear it right now, but he, uh, this ball club believed in themselves. They never thought they'd ever... Uh, you know, go away. I mean, the the, the series against Oakland. I mean, the, the Red Sox fans should. Uh, I know they're going to be proud. I know they're. I mean, there's a handful of people up there. Will you know, be the oh, wah 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 stuff like that. But but most of those people up there are are pretty damn proud of their ball club. Last question, Brian. <clears throat> Joe, uh, how emotional was it for you on the field right after the home run? And also, what is in light of the criticisms and little problems this year? What does this mean to you to go to the World Series? Well, you know, when you, it, it, it means this is the best. I mean, I, I'm taking nothing away from the Paul O'Neill Neil teams or Tino's teams or, you know, Brocious or Knobloch or, or uh, Girardi and, you know, guy David Cohn, uh, Jimmy Key, John Wetland my first year. Taking nothing away from, from those teams. Uh, but when you... You know, we only played one game seven, and that was the one in Arizona we lost uh, in the last inning. Uh, to come here and, and play against the Red Sox and and play them 26 times and, and beat our, our you know our rival like we did, uh, it uh, it couldn't be more satisfying. This has to be the sweetest taste of all for me. Um, they never quit, and and you know, to me, I, I tell my players every spring. I judge you on your effort. Uh, you're not always going to succeed, and and you know I uh, take you know you know people are going to say things on the radio or in the newspaper, but understand that you do the best you can. That's all you can do, and it's not always going to be nice or pretty or whatever on a day-to-day -day basis. But just understand that I appreciate it. And this ball club, they they started, they came together. Um, they showed me what they were all about, and I think they proved it to themselves that last trip up to Boston. Uh, Saturday game against Pedro. He had a 4 nothing lead on us, and, and we just kept battling back, battling back, and uh, won the next game, and then that last game on Sunday against them in our, uh, the following weekend. Uh, they, 
you know, at times it's tough to believe in yourself when you're struggling. But, I mean, Jason Giambi today, what, what a nice, huge day for him. And this guy over here, Booney, what a, my defensive replacement. Hit the home run. I love it. I, for three innings, I was waiting to see Manny turn his back and look at the ball go into the stands. It finally happened. Okay. We'll let him come up. He sure had to. When Aaron Boone went yard, he became just the fifth player to clinch a playoff series with a walk-off. Only Boone, Chris Chambliss, and Bill Mazeroski did it to clinch a decisive game. Boone benched because he wasn't hitting, and he's sitting down with Mariano Rivera live at Yankee Stadium to talk about playing the hero. Rivera, the MVP of the ALCS. Boone, the hero in Game oh, 7. Shut him down, buddy. <laughs> okay. Once again, like when we have two people up here, please let me know who your question's for. Ed, you got to wait for the microphone right behind you. There you go. Aaron, mm -hmm. in, uh, in your life at any level, anything like this, <coughs> anything, Little League, high school, any. Oh, yeah. This, this is ranks up there. No. <laughs> no, I mean, come on. This is. I, I still can't even put it into words. I mean, just to have the opportunity to. So many people today uh, had a huge hand in this, and for us to come back like that and, you know, to be in that spot and to get the chance, and, you know, it, it's humbling. This game humbles you all the time in good ways and bad ways. Yes. And, uh, and, you know, it's been humbling a little bit lately for me in a bad way, and this is just the same, and it, you know, it's, it's humbling. It's a humbling game, and right now I feel that way. Who else? For either of them. Okay, Roger, back there. Mariano, could you discuss, you know, what you're thinking as you have to keep going back out for another inning to and shut them down again? Well, I mean, I was thinking there's no, there's no way that we had to give up this, this game. You know, I had to hold, I had to do my best and hold the lead right there to give a chance to Booney <laughs> to hit that home run. <laughs> It was good. It was good. It was tremendous game. You know, I, I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of my teammates. I mean, they did tremendous. They pitched. I mean, it was it was outstanding. Who else? Okay, Albert. Mariano. Earlier in the season, you struggled a little. You know, people were wondering what was wrong with you. You came back in the postseason, the latter part of the season, and just amazed people again with uh, overpowering batters. Can you explain, was there anything bothering you earlier in the season that you got together later in the season, or were things just not going your way? No, it wasn't going my way. You know, I was doing the same thing that I'm doing right now. The only difference was that, uh, you know, I was missing my spots. Uh, if I wanted to throw the fastball, it was, if I was running over the plate, and uh, away was the same thing. I wanted to go away, I end up on, over the plate. So, I mean, I made sure that uh, if I got inside, I stay inside. If I'm going away, I stay away. And uh, that was really different. But I was still throwing the same velocity, the same, uh, the same pitches, and uh, it wasn't going my way. Thank you. Uh, for both of you guys, uh, I know you don't get to watch too much, but have you seen the, what the Florida Marlins have done this year? And if, if Boston has been cursed, uh, Florida looks like it's a team of destiny with the things that have been going their way. Well, let me tell you something. I mean, those guys, those guys play good. You know, they've been doing tremendous. You know, nobody thought that they're gonna go, you know, to the World Series. Nobody gave a chance, but you know what I mean? They, they show some character and uh, they play good. So, I mean, we have to respect that. We have to go there and play hard. Aaron? Yeah, I mean, that's a team, you know, I'm a little bit familiar with. And um, I remember back in May when they, when I was still in Cincinnati, they came in and swept us. And I remember the article saying, how can, how can the Marlins Sweepy and I remember saying to some people, I said, "That's a good team over there. They're very, they're, you know, the cliche with them is they don't beat themselves and all that, but they're really good. I mean, they catch the ball really good. They got speed, they got power, they got pitching, they got good bullpen now. You know, they're, and, and they've got themselves off the mat a lot of times at the end of the season. Um, you know, I remember going to Philly, losing 14 nothing that first game. You know, I'm thinking, all right, they're done, and they just keep on answering." And uh, I'm sure they'll be ready to go here Saturday night. Okay, Roger again. Aaron, can you describe the feelings that the fielders have 
when you guys have Mariano coming in to pitch for you? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, there's obviously no one else I'd rather have the ball in at the end of the game than Mo. So I'm bad to say though. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was just didn't want him to have to pitch too too long tonight, man. I knew he'd keep keep holding them there. And finally, we broke through. Okay. Way in the back there, in the middle. Aaron, you've seen the Yankees win a lot of games from the distance. Uh, being on the inside of it now, does it? make any more sense? Do you, do you have any insight into why this keeps happening? There's good people in that room. I mean, it's the bottom line. I mean, it's a lot of, we got a lot of good players, but um, there's a lot of good people that care first and foremost about winning to a man. And unfortunately, you don't always see that. But in that room, each day we come to the park, it's about winning. and. Uh, and that's special to be a part of that. I'm just going to take two more here and then John. Aaron, can you talk a little bit about the journey that you've been on from the emotional goodbye in mm -hmm. Cincinnati to the point that you're standing there with your arms over your head watching the ball fly out to send your team to the World Series? <laughs> you know, I'm still, I don't know, I'm still speechless on it. It's been, you know, it's been a, you know, being in one organization my whole life and um, obviously emotional leaving but knowing I'm going to a chance to, to be in a situation like this, I mean, that's all you can ask for. And, um, you know, it's been a little bit up and down for me, but um, it's just fun to come each day and, and try and contribute with, with the rest of those guys in that room because the one thing I've noticed since I've come over here, it's, it's a lot of good people down there. John, last question. Aaron, against Wakefield, do you take any particular approach or did you just catch one that didn't really move No, much? you know, I, we faced them a lot, obviously, this last couple months, and, and uh, I don't particularly like facing them. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I haven't squared too many up off them. You know, it's just a kind of a crapshoot a little bit trying to square that thing up sometimes. I, I consider taking a pitch leading off the inning there, but, you know, decided just get a good pitch to hit instead of, you know, work. And, you know, I... He got one up there, and I finally ran into one. And um, <laughs> you know, I've been coming around balls left and right for a while, and to finally put a good swing on one was, uh, I guess, I guess it was my time. You know, it was <laughs> nice. Congratulations, guys! Thank you. Well, it's just the sixth decisive game in Major League history to go into extra innings, and just the fourth. Game seven, the Yankees were on the wrong end of the ALDS in 95 when Ken Griffey Jr. scored the game-winning run for the Mariners at the Kingdom. But the Yankees on the winning end Thursday, they are into the World Series for the 39th time. Aaron Boone playing the hero in Yankee Stadium. Took so much heat since coming over in the trade. He's going to get a lot of pub tomorrow. ESPN News, brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. Get up here. All right, another look at the uh, World Series schedule. There it is, Marlins and Yankees. Oh, by the way, in case you're curious about the history between these two teams, didn't play at all this year. In fact, they haven't met since 01. The Yanks, 8-6 all-time against the Marlins, 4-1 at Yankee Stadium, 4-5 in South Florida. Of course, we'll have all the highlights from Game 7, post-game reaction, and, well, pretty much anything else that might be going on in the world of sports tonight, if there is anything else. It's all ahead on ESPN News, so stay with us. Sorry about that. 21 yarder. The kick is up. The kick is... This is Sports Center. Playing for all the AL marbles, the heat was on early in the Bronx. This ball is gone, a home run! Could Boston's bats ice the rocket? Or would the evil empire rise again? The stars were out in LA as the NBA's young prince shines out west. Should Green Bay pack it in already? Oakland's lone Raider gets served. And who's the ultimate franchise quarterback? Always breaking new ground, Sports Center now. Hello and welcome.
welcome to the party known as Sports Center alongside John Anderson. I'm Kevin Frazier. World Series stopping in South Beach, but we got to figure out who that other team's right. going to be. Red Sox or Yankees, they will decide it in Game 7, the 26th meeting between these two teams mm. this season. Yanks won the regular season series 10-9, and this one's all knotted up at three. Pedro Martinez coming in 1-1 one one in the postseason. Roger Clemens, well, now, fourth career start in a deciding game, hoping it's not his last one. Top first, two outs, no score. Clemens gets Manny Ramirez to fly out to Kareem Garcia, and just like that, the visiting half of the first is over. Pedro then coming out for his turn to the bottom of the first. Love him. Okay, maybe that wasn't low. That wasn't low. <laughs> they were booing. <laughs> bottom first, no score. One, two. Oh, Alfonso Soriano. Just the start of a very sore night for number 12. Four batters later, two yanks on, two, two pitch. Pedro to Hideki Matsui. Well, now. He's taking his base, except old blue back there, so that is a strong three and two. Luis Soho then, and Matsui flies out to Johnny Damon to end the inning. How about we go to the second, Kev? No score. Clemens on the hill, 2-0 pitch to Trot Nixon, and he says, groove me. Trot gets every bit of that. Nixon's fourth homer of the postseason. All of a sudden, Red Sox up by a deuce. Take another look, and uh, Clemens fastball just trails over the plate. Nixon pounces. Three batters later, Jason Veritek on second. Johnny Damon grounds to third. Enrique Wilson oh, melts. Veritek scores. Red Sox up three zip. Error on Wilson. Remember, Wilson in the lineup for his bat against Pedro, not his glove. And the ball gets away, Aaron Boone. There's a picture of him foreshadowing. Yeah, could be. Bottom second, Jason Giambi yanks down 3 nothing. Giambi dropped to seventh in the order here, strikes out on some high heat. Then the bottom of third, Soriano again, look at inside. Yeah, not too bad, 3-2 pitch. And he goes down on strikes again, fastball away. So we bounce to the fourth inning. First pitch, Clemens against Kevin Millar. Good night now. A home alone shot by Millar. His first postseason homer, 4 nothing Red Sox. Two batters later, Bill Miller singles to left. Trot Nixon goes to third on the hit and run. And watch Derek Jeter here going to cover. And when he goes to cover, the grounder goes right past him. And out comes Joe Torre. Would this be the last time we see Roger Clemens in pinstripes? Three innings, six hits, four runs. Mike Musina and the Moose, Moose takes over. He gets Jason Veritek swinging. And then Johnny Damon grounds into the 6-3 double play. It ends the inning. Yankees out of a jam, sort of. Yeah, bottom five, 4 nothing game. Pedro finally going to get on the board thanks to Giambi. There goes the shutout, his second home of the postseason. Yanks down 4-1. A couple three batters later. Pedro to Soriano is now three for three. Three at bats, three strikeouts. That's not good line so far. So we go to the bottom of seven. New York down 4-1, 2-2 pitch. Mr. Giambi steps in, and Johnny Damon thinks he has a line on it. Does it? Giambi, second homer of the game. All of a sudden, Yankees down 4-2, and you sense. You sense that something's <laughs> happening. Later, next batter, Enrique Wilson. And for some reason, instead of just flipping it, Millard tries to make the play. So out comes Garcia Parra. He tells his guy, Pedro, handle your business. He does get Soriano swinging. David Wells now in the game. David Ortiz and David Ortiz crushes it. That'll make it 5-2, and that'll send us to the bottom of the eighth. With one out, five outs away from the World Series. Didn't the Cubs have this problem? You never know. Bernie Williams singles. Derek Jeter scores, and the Yanks are now down 5-3. We'll visit the mound. Pedro stays. Hideki Matsui flat raking into the corner. A ground rule double. Fan touched it. Oh, goodness. Fan touched it. Yankees on second and third bullpen. They're ready. We got some guys ready to go. Bring them on in. Pedro staying in. Next batter, 2-2 Posada. Oh, a flare for the dramatic. It's down. Two runs will score. Williams and Matsui, and we are tied at five, and all of New York is in a lather. And finally, Grady Little comes out to get his man. 
Obviously the Sox not. not out of this thing yet. Mike Timlin intentionally walking Ruben Sierra. Then Kareem Garcia, he walks, not intentionally, but we got the bases chucked. And here comes Soriano again. Man was 0 for 4 with four strikeouts, and now make him 0 for 5 off the mound. Todd Walker will grab it for the force. We're tied at 5 going to the ninth. So Joe Torre hands it over to the safety net. Mariano Rivera, Todd Walker, loops it to Soriano, inning over, out of a jam. Rivera digging it. The Red Sox not so happy. Bottom of the ninth, tied at five. Mike Timlin, Bernie Williams, grounder. Todd Walker, amazing stop and throws it from his knees. Inning over. Top of the 11, Rivera working a third inning for the first time in seven years. And uh, Rivera strikes out Trot Nixon looking. Then Rivera gets Doug Mirabelli swinging. He ends the inning. Bob 11, Tim Wakefield pitching to Aaron Boone, the pinch hitter. His first at bat of the game. There's a fly ball deep to left. It's on its way. There it goes. And the Yankees are going to the World Series. Aaron Boone has hit a home run. The Yankees go to the World Series for the 39th time in their remarkable history. Oh, and again, the dugout's clear. But this time, only one dugout, the winning one. Joe Torre and company are going back to the World Series. Yanks win the season series 10-9 and this amazing series 4-3. Fourth extra inning game seven in history. And the home team has won all four. Clemens off the hook. Rivera three innings, 48 pitches, the win, and MVP honors. Pedro fails to protect the lead for the second time in the series. Left on the mound, out of gas by his manager in the eighth. Here now the victors and the vanquished, especially the big bat. Can't even put it into words. I mean, just to have the opportunity to so many people today uh, had a huge hand in this, and for us to come back like that, and you know, to be in that spot and to get the chance, and you know, it, it's humbling. This game humbles you all the time in good ways and bad ways. For, this was a, a total team effort, guys running hard, playing hard. Uh, I didn't like the signs that were uh, things were happening when Soriano hit that ball and hit the uh, hit the mound, you know, and then Walker, you know, makes two sensational plays that one of them, and then one on Bernie. I said, oh, I don't like the way this thing is unraveling here. Uh, but uh, Booney, I mean, he he struggled since he's been here offensively. Uh, what a what a huge uh, huge base hit, for him, home run for him. Oh, huge, all right. Boone clocks just the fifth series clinching go homer in history and only the second in extra innings. It's the third to take place in New York City. The others being Chris Chambliss in the 76 ALCS against the Royals. Todd Pratt hit one to 99 in the NLDS against Arizona. I believe he hit that for Mr. Valentine. Yanks making up for losing the first one to Maz in 1960. Speaking of Mr. Valentine, Bobby Valentine, Harold Reynolds, and Carl Ravage standing by with lots of analysis and insight into game seven of a gem of an American League Championship Series. That's next on Sports Center. The Baseball Tonight crew chimes in. Hey, boys, your kitchen's Welcome back to Sports Center. Bobby Valentine and Howard Reynolds. I'm Carl Ravitch. Up in smoke it went. Cubs Red Sox World Series, and both teams found themselves with three run leads and six outs to go, and neither team could Man. get it done. Mm. And you can ask Dusty about taking Mark Pryor out of the game or leaving him in. You certainly can ask Grady Little about the eighth inning and leaving Pedro Martinez in. His job was to get through seven, go to Timlin, go to Williamson. It didn't actually go that way. Let's take a look at the eighth inning, and you guys tell me what, what you think should have happened. Well, Jeter with the 0-2 base hit here, obviously Pedro is starting to lose it. it, it you know, he, he wanted the ball up high out of the zone, came back down to the plate where he can handle it, the ball out over the plate. When you say lose it, what does that mean? Well, to me, to me that's signs of when you start missing your spots, to me that's fatigue, you know. And so Grady all season long has gone with his gut. And that's what he's sitting there thinking right now. Pedro's my guy. I'm going to help him get through this thing. Very similar to what Dusty Baker did. I, I didn't agree with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you got to go ahead and take him out. Anytime you ask any player in a competitive situation, if he's healthy, if he's hurt, if he's tired, he's going to say, yeah, I'm fine, and it's my ball. And particularly, Pedro Martinez. Everybody's saying this is your defining moment. This is your game. He goes back to, to Yankee Stadium. They're all booing him. He's not going to give up the baseball. You got to go pry that thing out of his hands and, and move on to that bullpen. And the bullpen's been throwing pretty good. They've been great. Is that, the, didn't go is that the toughest decision a manager has to make? 
A well, I think decision. every game that's lost, the manager either takes the pitcher out too soon or leaves him in too long. It's a simple situation if you want to just critique the manager. But as Harold said, the, the one thing going into this game that the Boston Red Sox had going for them was not the length of Pedro Martinez, not the durability that he showed in the last month or so, but in the excellence of their bullpen. That's why they're playing Game 7. That's why they got through the first set, and that's why they were in Game 7 in the second set of this uh, uh, postseason, and I think they they could have been relied on a little more in this situation. All right, this whole run, you know, 1996, Rivera back then, young and spry, and going three innings was no problem. Well, he pitches three innings for the first time since 1996. What a great performance he gave. Well, he was fantastic, and, you know, coming into this series, some people thought, and I was one of them, that he was a little less than past. I think he's even more than he was in the past because he showed that he has a 96-mile-an-hour fastball, 94-mile-an-hour fastball that no one can hit. They can't center it. They have trouble with it, deciding if it's in, inside or outside, and he can strike them out and still break the bats and pitch as well as anyone who's ever played the game of baseball. What so. impressed me about Mariano is he's pitching now. You know, when he was a youngster setting up for, for Wetland, he was just throwing straight right. fastballs. Here's the gas. I dare you. I'm coming after you. And now he's cutting the ball. He's moving it, and he's cutting it back in on right-handers. He's... he's been fantastic. In the Seesaw series in which people were MVPs and then the next minute they seem to be in the role of GOAT. Aaron Boone has struggled since he came to the Yankees and does this vindicate an entire season? Well, I think a lot of New York fans are saying yeah. You know, I mean, that's what the postseason is all about. You know, people define guys' seasons, which I don't agree with on how they do in the postseason. You know, Aaron Boone comes up with the big home run here and it's funny because when he came to bat off Wakeland, I just remembered watching the games like we do and sitting there talking with Bobby and you and everybody else. And Bob, he, he hooked the ball in game five at Fenway Park, foul off Wakeland. Wakefield. And it looked, Wakefield, I'm sorry. That would have been a home run, but it was a foul ball. And I just started thinking about that when he came to the plate. And Bobby said, the best way to hit a knuckleballer, and he's had a couple of them, is to get out there and hook it. And that's how you're going to hit a guy. And then shortly after Boone hit the ball foul in Fenway. And I started thinking about that when he came to the plate tonight. And sure enough, he got a pitch. He pulled it, hit the home run. Through six games, managers on both teams, players, this is about as evenly matched as two teams can get. They end up playing 26 games. They end up meeting each other for a total of 83 hours. Now it's the Yankees and the Marlins in the World Series. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. Back to you guys. Plenty more to come inside this edition of SportsCenter. LeBron... Not in high school anymore, son. Meet the glove and Mr. Malone, LeBron in La La Land. Bill Romanowski is known as being high strung, but his attack on a teammate surprised everyone. Now Marcus Williams wants payback, and we'll tell you how he plans to get it. The Colts are 5-1 and one, and one of the AFC's best teams, but would you build a franchise around Peyton Manning? John Clayton would, our QB, disagrees. John, are you on their payroll? Because all I ever hear about Colts this, Colts that, Colts this, Colts that. Mariano Rivera had not pitched three innings in a single game since September 1996. Well, Joe Torre needed his stud to go that many innings against the Red Sox Thursday in Game 7, and Rivera came through. After the game, Peter Gammons came through, getting in touch with Mariano. Mariano, how tired were you when you got to that third inning? I wasn't at all. Really? I was I was ready. I wasn't tired at all. What did Joe say to you about how long you'd go? They didn't tell me nothing. I was upset because they pulled me off the game. Three innings, and you know what? So I got a pitch. I was, I was ready, but you know, I'm happy. I'm happy for this. Is this the greatest game you ever played in? Definitely. Definitely. I ran this number one. And how excited are you right now? Big time. Compared to the other championships you've won, was this the greatest moment for one game? I think it is. Definitely. It is. Mariano, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Back to you. All right, Peter, we duck in some college football, Air Force, Colorado State. ESPNRadio.com to find the fall classic in your town. As we go to the bottom of the 11th, here's Aaron Boone to lead off. His first at bat of the game. There's a fly ball deep to left. It's on its way. There it goes. And the Yankees are going to the world. Air 
Aaron Boone's 11th inning homer, the difference, and there is now Bedlam in the Bronx. Our Peter Gammons caught up with the hero just moments after his home run. Aaron, what went through your mind when the ball jumped off your bat? I got it. I got it. I stayed, got, got inside it enough, and, and I knew I got it, but uh, I tell you, if we would have lost today, uh, I would not have been, it would not have been a fun four months for me. I know I, you know, not, not performing very well. And, it, uh, you know, there's always a silver lining sometimes. And sometimes things happen uh, in crazy ways. And what a job Mo did. I mean, what, this is, this is stupid, man. This is unbelievable. Is this the kind of game that growing up in the game that you always dreamed about? Yeah. I mean, I, I think everyone in this stadium at some points dreamed of this kind of thing. Um, and to get to live it out, uh, I, I can't even really feel my body in it still. This is this is unbelievable. Aaron, thanks a lot. Okay, back to you. So we take a look at the 2003 World Series matchup, and then we also take a look at Pedro Martinez. And he had allowed six hits and two earned runs through the first seven innings before just coming unglued in the eighth. After getting Nick Johnson to pop up, he allowed four straight hits, three of them for extra bases, before getting lifted for Allen Embry. Easy being a Yankee? Are you kidding? There is no curse worse than winning. When success and nothing else is required, failure cannot simply be pawned off on unlucky livestock or conveniently blamed on the Bambino. The Yankees' postgame celebration is much relief as joy. Pure delight comes from doing something totally unexpected. You know, see the Marlins, who can now file a flight plan for New York. Peter Gammons with Mariana Rivera as the Yanks end a streak of one whole year away from the World Series. Mariano, how tired were you when you got to that third inning? I wasn't at all. Really? I wasn't. I was ready. I wasn't tired at all. What did Joe say to you about how long you'd go? He didn't tell me nothing. I was upset. Because they pulled me off the game. Three innings, and you know what? So I got a pitch. But I, was, I was ready, but you know, I'm happy. I'm happy for this. Is this the greatest game you've ever played in? Definitely. Definitely. I ran this number one. And how excited are you right now? Big time. Compared to the other championships you've won, was this the greatest moment for one game? I think it is. Definitely. It is. Mariano, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Back to you. The numbers of the future. Marlins are 1-4 all-time at Yankee Stadium with a horrid ERA as a team of 6.15. However, Florida holds a 5-4 edge over New York in games played down in Miami. The teams have not met in interleague play since 2001. Carl and company with a first look at that last season of the series. Take from it what you want. I mean, the Red Sox and Marlins played, and that was a 70-run three-game series, including 25. But none of the pitchers that pitched in that series are there. And, in fact, the Red Sox aren't going to be dealing with the uh, Florida Marlins. It's the New York Yankees who are going to be dealing with them, as everybody predicted when the season began. Oh, Marlins, yeah. Marlins, Yankees. Yankees series. I have, series. No doubt. These are, these are two very different teams, are they not? I mean, they're good, but they're different. Yeah, they really are. I mean, one team uh, is a lot more speed. The other team's starting to come around with their power a little bit, being the Yankees. But I I think it's going to come down to defense. I love the defense of the Florida Marlins, and if you haven't been watching them, these guys are amazing. Juan Pierre had a sensational, sensational playoff so far, starting things at the top of the order, him and Castillo. But I think where Castillo is best for this club is defensively. He's incredible in the field, and Gonzalez up the middle. They don't make mistakes. They catch the ball. They turn great double plays. I think they're a big reason they've been in the game so long. And then you, when you look at the Yankees, you think about Andy Pettit, Posada, Jeter, and also Mariano Rivera. These guys have been there every time. They're going for their fifth ring. These guys are going for their fifth ring. To me, that's uh, an uh, amazing thing. And so we're looking forward to a great series. It's going to be a great time. I think the Marlins' power pitching is really going to challenge the Yankees. The experience does count in the postseason. What Harold just referred to, it does make a difference or does it not? I think it makes a little bit of a difference just because of the unknown. You don't like to go into anything without ex having some expectation. But when you look at Pudge Rodriguez, who is really one of the captains of this team, you look at Jeff Conine, who's another captain, if you will, of this team, they both have great experience against the Yankees. 
Yankees and in the American League. I think that they can share a lot of this knowledge and share a lot of their experience with the Yankees and what they look forward to in Yankee Stadium and their pitching staff and their hitters along uh, to the other team, uh, their other teammates. So th this should give them a little bit of an edge. And, you know, Aaron Boone came over from the National League, so he has a, an idea about the Florida Marlins baseball team. So that's going to be a little sharing of information, sharing of experiences. But I think this is going to be a lot better series than some people might think. This is a very good Florida Marlin team against a very experienced and excellent New York Yankee team clashing heads a couple days from now. And you made an interesting point that the Marlins are so right-handed dominant. And thinking about a player that came over also from Cincinnati, Gabe White, who left-handed pitcher, and you know that he's going to be sitting down with those lefties of the Yankees talking about how to go after this offense. Right. Don't get so down on the Marlins. Let's remember the last time the World Series was there. Team. You know, seven games, they beat the Indians. This is sort of the six degrees of Craig Council World Series. Council scored that winning run in 97, and when the Yankees lost their last World Series to the Diamondbacks, Council was a Diamondback. And now he'll be watching with us. And now he'll be watching <laughs> with us. Six exactly. degrees. A reminder. <laughs> serious. It's been a great postseason. We will talk all about the postseason past and what we can expect in the World Series on a Baseball Tonight World Series special Friday on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern Time, followed by the Baseball Tonight Web Gems Award special. We give a Web Gem Award to each and every position on the field, the team of the year, and the play of the year. That's good baseball television as the postseason takes a night off. We'll see you then, John. Thank you, man. Well, we return from Game 7s to Week 7. Salisbury and Clayton, another great NFL debate. Which quarterback do you want to build your franchise around? All three look that pretty good. Yeah. Go ahead and blame the GOAT, but please get off the guy's back. So say the Chicago Cubs. A day after losing to the Marlins in the NLCS, the Cubbies coming to the defense of Steve Bartman. At least I think that's who the team was referring to in a statement that read in part, it is inaccurate and unfair to suggest that an individual fan is responsible for the events that transpired in game six. He, didn't say his name, just he did what every fan who comes to the ballpark tries to do, catch a foul ball in the stands. That's one of the things that makes baseball the special sport that it is. You know, if, if they could find the Titanic, if they could find the ships from the Spanish Armada, why can't somebody just go to the bottom of that lake outside of Babe Ruth's summer home in Massachusetts and find that piano? You know, the one that the Bambino allegedly pushed into the lake. Just be proactive, Boston fans. Reverse the curse. Because as Reese Davis reports, another winter will come and go without the Red Sox winning a title. It was a single transaction that forever changed the destiny of two teams. In 1920, the Red Sox sold Babe Ruth to the Yankees. 26 Yankee championships later, the Red Sox still don't have any. Over the years, it's become known as the curse of the Bambino, and the two have become bitter rivals, with the Red Sox accustomed to the role of bridesmaid. Along the way, there have been some heartbreaking losses. In 1949, the Sox had a one-game lead over the Yanks with two to play. They lost both games and the pennant to New York. In 1978, the Sox blew a 14-game lead in August. In a one-game playoff with the Yankees, the unthinkable happened again. Yeah. Hit high in the air to left field, going to the corner, Yastrzemski. It's over the wall, it's a home run for Bucky Dent. Yankees get the lead 3-2. Four times the Red Sox made it to Game 7 of the World Series, and four times they lost. But mostly, it was the Yankees who won it all while the Sox wondered what went wrong. Whenever we made a mistake on a field, usually it might cost you a run or something like that, but it seemed to cost us a ball game whenever we made a mistake. So you don't mind if you don't have the talent, but when you do have the talent, then it kind of hurts a little more. In the last six years, the Red Sox have finished second to the Yankees six times. If you can't beat them, join them. Starting in 1998, Boston went on a spending spree aimed at one thing, beating the Yankees. They traded for baseball's most dominant pitcher, Pedro Martinez, and in 1999, lost the ALCS to the Yankees four games to one. They spent $160 million to bring in one of baseball's most feared hitters, Manny Ramirez, in 2001. And this year, loaded up with four more bats, one of which won the batting title. The Red Sox led the majors in runs and slugging percentage. In fact, they set a slugging percentage record, besting the 27 Yankees. Not only that, 
but they completely overhauled their bullpen, one area where the Yankees seemed to hurt the most. And after all that... There's a fly ball deep to left! It's on its way! There it goes! And the Yankees are going to the World Series! The Sox are still a day late and a dollar short, losing Game 7 to the Yankees in perhaps the most painful way imaginable, blowing a 4-0 lead with their ace on the hill. You know, and there's a theme to these Game 7 losses for the Red Sox. In their last three Game 7 losses dating back to the 75 World Series against the Reds, in each game, Boston blew a three-run lead in the middle or latter stages of the game. Mm -hmm. One other baseball note to pass along. The Red Sox losses weren't only on the field Thursday. Peter Gammons reports that Red Sox GM of baseball operations, Mike Port, will be named the general manager of the Mariners in the next two days. Now, Port will replace Pat Gillick, who retired just after the regular season ended. Still ahead on SportsCenter, it's today's best plays, whether it's hockey players sitting with the audience or just great baseball. We'll have it all. Sports Center is a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Now available at MSN.com. Red Sox had their ace on the mound and a four run lead. It ought to be good enough. But it was not. Pedro's manager, Grady Little, left him out there perhaps a little too long into the eighth inning, and Pedro unable to bring it home. There's no reason to blame Grady. Grady doesn't play the game. We did. I did. If anybody wants to look at somebody and point a finger, they can point it at me. Because I, I was the one pitching. I was the one that gave up the lead. And uh, you know what? If you want to judge me for that and curse me or do whatever, I'll swallow that because I, I was out there and I'm responsible for the pitches I make and the decisions I take in, in the middle of the game. Meanwhile, things seemed worse for the Yankees when they seemed like they were in trouble. It was Jason Giambi's homers who provided the, that provided the only offense. Our Peter Gammons caught up with, well, not quite Mr. October, but Close Mr. Mr. Close, right? Is this the greatest game you've ever participated in? Unbelievable. This game will drive me to drink. I swear to God. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, uh, to be a part of this game and to have everything that happened and the way the Boston Red Sox battled us and come back tonight, unbelievable. What were you thinking when you saw Aaron's ball take off? We were just begging for it to stay fair, and once it did, I, I can't even describe the feeling. To be part of that game and to end it that way, you know, b battle with Boston has been unbelievable all season long. Uh, for you, dropping to the seventh hole and then hitting the two home runs, does that also add to this? Oh, yeah, it's incredible. You know, Skip came to me, you know, he's up in battling injuries the whole time. He said, I'm going to drop you down. You you know, you don't have good numbers against Pedro. So, you know, hopefully you'll get going and, uh, you know, hitting two homers doesn't get any better than that. Jason, congratulations. Thanks, Thanks a Thank lot. You. Back to you. So uh, just another unbelievable Crazy. night in the Bronx as the Yankees beat the Red Sox on a walk-off home run by Aaron Boone, as you just heard in the 11th inning. Yeah, the Yanks trailing 4-0 in this game. Did you know that the only other team to rally from a four-run deficit in a decisive game, the Pittsburgh Pirates Game 7 of the 25 World Series, they rallied up to beat the Washington Senators, the Washington Senators, of course, who can never beat those damn Yankees. A lot of questions about Grady Little and his moves in this game. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just uh, revisit the whole thing? We're going into extra innings. Please stick <laughs> yes, around. We we'll are. be here. Welcome to the party known as Sports Center. Alongside John Anderson, I'm Kevin Frazier. The World Series stopping in South Beach. It's just, who would the other city be? Mm -hmm. Boston or New York? Well, that's for the Red Sox and Yankees to decide in Game 7. The signing game with two great names on the bump. Pedro Martinez, 1-1 one one in the postseason. Roger Clemens, fourth career start in a deciding series game, but perhaps it doesn't go well the last of his career. Top one, two outs, no score. Clemens gets Manny Ramirez to fly up to Kareem Garcia, and so that was all pretty good. End of the top of the first. Then in the home half, a welcome for Pedro. I believe that's a Bronx cheer, correct? <laughs> Bottom first, no score. One two pitch. Alfonso Soriano goes down swinging. A couple four batters later. Two Yankees on. Two two pitch. Pedro to Hideki Matsui. And I don't know how they play ball there in the Japanese league, but here in America, it takes four balls to earn a wall. That's just three two. You got to go back. Oh, wow. Luis Soho finds that kind of funny. Next pitch. Matsui flies out to Johnny Damon, and we got nothing on the board. 
after one inning. Kevin. In the natural progression of a baseball game, we go to the second inning. No score, 2 0 pitch from Roger Clemens to Trot Nixon, and guess who's clubbing? Trot. A two run shot. All of a sudden, Red Sox up by a deuce. Nixon's fourth home run of the postseason. Watch it again. And Clemens' fastball just tails over the plate. Nixon pounces. Three batters later, Jason Veritek on second. Johnny Damon grounds the third. Enrique Wilson, the easy throw. Oh, no. <laughs> Veritek scores. Error for Wilson. Red Sox up 3 0. And take another look at this. Wilson in the lineup for his bat against Pedro, not his glove. Where's Aaron Boone? Hmm, sitting there foreshadowing, my friends. Yeah, if they play long enough, you might get in. Bottom second, Jason Giambi dropped to seventh in the order and, well, strikes out against Pedro on high cheese. And if you're wondering if Pete could go inside, he did on Soriano. Of course, maybe he's just setting him up after a little high hello inside. Gets him striking out on the fastball away. So fourth inning, Roger Clemens first pitch to Kevin Millar, and he says, mm, good. A home alone shot, Red Sox up 4-0, and you can sense the party already starting in Beantown. Millar's first homer of the postseason. Two batters later, Bill Miller singles to left. Trot Nixon goes to third on the hit and run, and watch again. Derek Jeter cheating towards second. And Miller's grounder goes right past him. Out comes Joe Torre, Roger Clemens done, three innings, six hits, four runs, maybe the end of his career at that point. So in comes Mike Mussina for the first relief appearance of his career. Next batter, Jason Veritek done. 33 pitches, 25 strikes for Mussina. Then he gets Damon to ground into the 6-3 double play, three scoreless innings from the Moose. Let's go to the bottom of the fifth. New York down 4 nothing, And Giambi apparently wants to go clubbing with the fellas because he just ruined a shutout, making 4-1 his second homer of the clubbing postseason. Clubbing with the boss and Derek. <laughs> Three back. Yeah, exactly. Get a tux. Soriano. Oh, look at Uncle Charlie. Three now with three strikeouts as the inning ends. Bottom of the seventh, New York down 4-1, two to pitch, and Giambi does it again. A home alone shot, another one. Drop to the seventh slot, and that's two home runs from the seventh spot. Look at how close Johnny Damon comes. Pops would have helped him. Next batter, Enrique Wilson, grounder off first base, and oh, Millar, or is that the Gremlins? Was that the Bambino <laughs> that tripped him up? Could have just tossed it to Pedro. Nomar tells Pedro, go out and handle your business. He does. Pedro gets Soriano swing, gets a little love for Ramon in reverse in the dugout. Top eight, Boston up 4-2. Still David Wells into pitching his very first pitch by David Ortiz. Yank, get out. Solo homer, Ortiz second homer of the postseason. 5-2 game. Bottom eight, New York, still 5-2. Boston five outs from the promised land. Same as the Cubs were in game six, and, well, uh-oh, bad things happening. Bernie Williams singles, Jeter scores, Yankees down 5-3. Grady comes out, checks on his man, leaves him in. Pedro, Matt Suey, that's down the line. Another jerk job. Fan touches it, ground rule double. Yanks on second and third. Timlin, Wakefield in the pen. Just pick up the phone. Pedro stays in. Next batter, 2-2. Jorge Posada. A little flair for the dramatic. It's down. Williams and Matt Suey score. RBI double, two RBIs. Tied at five. Yankees loving it. Grady Little, now he's got to go get his man. Hook me. Same inning, two outs. Mike Timlin in. He intentionally walked Ruben Sierra to load the bases. That puts two men on. Then an intentional walk to Cream Garcia. No, that time he walked him just regular, like, and the bases are chucked. Next batter, Soriano, 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. Finally gets his bat on it, and then just some bad luck off the mound. Todd Walker fields it. Garcia Perra, the fours were tied at five, going to the ninth. Go to the ninth inning, and Mariano Rivera in. Todd Walker loops it. Soriano there. Walker, one for five in the game. It ends the inning, and Rivera digging the scene. Red Sox, uh, not really. Mike Timlin into pitch. Bernie Williams, the grounder, and Todd Walker, a top 10 nominee, makes a great play from his knees. Timlin unscathed in an inning and a third. All right, nothing in the 10th. We go to the 11th. Rivera in his third inning of work. Gets Nixon looking. Two batters later, Doug Mirabelli swinging done. Rivera ends the inning. He was just stout. Bottom of the 11th. Tied 5-5. Tim Wakefield back into Aaron Boone. First at bat of the game. There's a fly ball deep to left. It's on its way. There it goes. And the Yankees are going to the World Series. Aaron Boone has hit a home run. The Yankees go to the World Series for the 39th time in their remarkable history. A 
remarkable 6-5 win. Aaron, insert your own expletive here. Boone. Wakefield, the winner in game one and four, gets touched in the 11th. And there is the loss. Again, the dugouts cleared between these two, but one of them went onto the field. You can see Revere emotionally spent. The other team went to the locker room to pack up. Wells, Clemens, they go out. A little smooch for the Bambino. <laughs> hey, the no. fat man came through again for the Yanks. They win the season series 10-9. They win this amazing series 4-3. The fourth extra inning game seven in history, and the home team now has won all four of them. Clemens off the hook. Revere, as I said, three innings, 48 pitches, the win, and MVP honors. Pedro fails to protect the lead for the second time in the series. Perhaps left on the mound, out of gas by his manager in the eighth. Here now the victors and the vanquish. And Aaron Boone appears to have had time to shave. I still can't even put it into words. I mean, just to have the opportunity to... So many people today uh, had a huge hand in this. And for us to come back like that and, you know, to be in that spot and to get the chance and, you know, it, it's humbling. This game humbles you all the time in good ways and bad ways. This was a, a total team effort. Guys running hard, playing hard. Uh, I didn't like the signs that were, uh, things were happening when Soriano hit that ball and hit the, uh, hit the mound, you know, and then Walker, you know, makes two sensational plays, that one of them, and then one on Bernie. I said, oh, I don't like the way this thing is unraveling here. Uh, but uh, Booney, I mean, he, he struggled since he's been here offensively. Uh, what, a, what a huge, uh, huge base hit, for, uh, home run for him. There's no reason to blame Grady. Grady doesn't play the game. We did. I did. If anybody wants to look at somebody and point a finger, they can point it at me. Because I, I was the one pitching. I was the one that gave up the lead. And uh, you know what? If you want to judge me for that and curse me or do whatever, I'll swallow that because I, I was out there. And I'm responsible for the pitches I make and the decisions I take in, in the middle of the game. Pedro didn't give up the last one. Aaron Boone clocks just the fifth series clinching go homer in history and only the second and extra innings. Third time it's taken place in New York City. The others being Chris Chambliss, 76 ALCS against the Royals, and Todd Pratt's in 99, the NLDS against Arizona, who I believe he hit for Mr. Valentine. Yanks perhaps making up for losing the first one to Maz in 1960.